So welcome back to my channel. This is Gamer Dom, and um, yeah, I did it. My very, very first. I just realised my glasses are wonky. And my very, very first bolt action tournament uh, was at the weekend, organised by Reading Wargaming. Um, Sixteen players, I think it was. Uh, any period of bolt action you wanted, any of the books, um, up to a maximum of sixteen order dice. Now, if you remember. If you've watched the channel for a little while, I did a couple of videos about some of the th armies I was thinking about using. Originally, I was going to use a 1944 German um, recce group, um, and I played it a few times, and you know, it was all right, went okay, but it was a bit boring, I thought. Uh, lots of trucks, which are a little bit expensive to use. So, in the end, I changed it, and I went for a an army based around, do you remember that battle scene at the end of Private Ryan? Uh, where the Germans attack and um, they're holding the bridge against them and there's a Tiger and there's a Panzer, th a Panzer III and there's a 20 mil flat gun and a, a Marder and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, that'd be great. So can't afford to have a Tiger in the army, uh, but I went for that. So I built it around the flat gun, so it's got a 20 mil flat gun. Um, it, a load of Falschermjäger squads, because if you look at that battle, a lot of them seem to be wearing Falschermjäger uniforms. Um, and I made a lot of them green because it's late war and if you look at the tactics in that battle they kind of lose an awful lot of infantry without much effort. So the army, let me just grab my notes, the army itself, should have kept a, a picture of it really but you'll see it in some of the pictures coming up. I had a first lieutenant um, with a, a squaddy with him, both with assault rifles. I had two full strength green Falschermjäger uh, squads. Uh, which had two light machine guns in each and the rest with rifles and two Panzerfaust in each. Now if you remember green, uh, once you suffer a casualty, um, you dice. If you throw a five or a six, they become regular. Um, a one, they get extra two extra pins, I think it is, um, and one to four, they become inexperienced moving forward. So they're treated as inexperienced until they do that test. Um, so two squads like that. So the theory is they hold ground, a lot of firepower. Um, then I had an assault engineer squad which had a uh, submachine gun, three men with submachine guns, a flamethrower and a man with a rifle. The attendants, they had anti-tank grenades, they're all veteran. Um, then another veteran um, grenadier unit of um, how many, seven, six men, um, four of them with assault rifles, one with a submachine gun and one with a rifle. And then again with two with two Panzerfaust in that one, um, which were also veteran, went with um, a medium mortar with a spotter, regular, a regular sniper, because I do like my sniper, then as I said the flat gun, 20mm flat gun, um, veteran, so I like this gun, two shots, 48 inch range, plus two penetration, so they theoretically can deal with any kind of light transports that are around. Uh, very easily and any half tracks or Bren carriers that kind of thing was a theory and also firing against infantry they have a one inch template with two shots so uh, they actually it was actually really good and because I took um, a gun shield on it and they were veteran being fired at directly you need six to kill them so that was very effective um, I had a motorcycle sidecar with machine gun um, again veteran and that's just a no-brainer that's four uh, sorry um, yeah that's 40 points um, Sorry, it wasn't veteran, it was regular. 40 points, which means, um, yeah, which is considerably less than um, a regular um, MMG squad is when you're playing that just normally. Um, so that was good. Then I had the Marder, because if you watch that film, you'll see um, it gets taken out actually with the Molotov cocktail into the back compartment. Um, so that went, that went into the army. Wasn't sure about that because it's only armor seven, uh, but it does have a heavy gun, which is great for penetrating armor, uh, but also firing HE. It's a plus two. Uh, it's a it's a two inch template, which is quite effective. But it is open top, so any kind of infantry fire will pin it very easily. And then a veteran truck with medium machine gun. So it was eleven order dice, um, and that's what I took. So have a look at. I didn't film any of the games because, um, yeah, it was. I didn't want to intrude on other players so um, I just took a few pictures and um, I'll show you some of the footage or some of the snaps and some of the um, the action that happened from that. The competition worked was that um, 
uh, everybody played the same scenario in each round. So the first round was meeting engagement, uh, which is basically a simple kill all uh, scenario. Um, no units were set up on the table to begin with, um, uh, but up to two units could be f uh, forward deployed. Um, anything left in reserve was your first wave and uh, could come on without a die. So I was up against, I think his name is John, uh, who was playing uh, Finnish. Um, and I've never played Finnish, so um, it was kind of an interesting game because I always fancied them as a, as a nation to play anyway. This I just like the other two little little nations, to be honest. Um, so you can see, it, typical, it's a desert map, nice map, lots of terrain. That was a feature of a lot of the games here. You can see John put out one, two, three, four squads in the middle on this sort of left middle flank. It's backed up by a tank. Uh, there's a spotter you can just see to the left of where my flamethrower team is. Um, that's the spotter for heavy howitzer, which is on the other flank. He also had a mortar, so yeah, heavy howitzer, mortar, machine gun, tank with lots of machine guns, lots of squads. There's another squad on the other flank. I thought I was up against it. He also was trying to take advantage of the Finnish special rule, which allows you to um, go into ambush and then get plus one on the subsequent shot out of ambush, um, which is quite mean. However, the trouble is those squads are regular, so they die quite easily. As you can see, he'd set two of them at least. We're fairly in the open. Uh, on my side, you can see I brought the truck on um, to provide machine gun support to my troops, and the assault engineers ran out and grabbed that wall with a view to try and taking out that uh, observer because that heavy howitzer could take out a lot of my troops. So I thought if I can get in there and get in cover before his squads move forward, I've got a good chance. You can also see my Falschenjäger squad has moved up, uh, supported by the veterans and the officer. On the other flank, you can see the heavy howitzer up in the top corner there backed up by an infantry squad. He's got a sniper in that bunker in the middle. I had a sniper in mine. And both snipers had a field day in this game. He just kept picky on my poor Fashion Jaeger who was holding the subjective in uh, in the middle of the, the picture here. Took out their both LMGs in the first two rounds and then started to pick on the men before he then chose to kill my uh, spotter for my mortar who's sitting on the hill on the left-hand side. The mortar's behind him and being dragged on is my flak gun, which um, actually had a huge, well, not a huge part, had a very good game. Um, my bit of faux, faux pas here was the Mardi. You can just see it creeping on in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, I wanted to try and get to deal with his uh, tank because that could make a mess of my infantry. Um, and um, the problem was he, uh, he had placed his anti-tank rifle just to the... Uh, just to the south of where the uh, heavy howitzer is, and I hadn't realised it was an anti-tank rifle. He did tell me, um, so it's my fault, and I should have asked him if I wasn't sure, but I assumed it was a machine gun, um, and it was in range, so it kept popping away at my marder, uh, which made me very, very nervous. Um, I think my fashion yoga here, actually, when they took their casualty, they became regular, which was one nice thing out of this. So uh, that was the start of things. So you can see here that my uh, assault engineers have now moved forward. Um, I basically, I didn't try and uh, assault the spotter. It was just no point because also it allowed me to be hit by all in the flank by all those other troops throughout there. And he also moved his tank and his machine gun round to flank them. So I got into that sort of cover position and basically killed him with gunfire. Then moved the Falschenjäger squad up. To support them, they ran, and then the truck has moved up to support and provide machine gun fire as well. The squad on uh, my challenge here was that my assault engineers obviously have a flamer, which is nice, and also um, the rest of the squad only has uh, submachine guns, so the range is very limited. So I was kind of a bit lost to do, and I wasn't. In, if I move forward, I'm going to get hit by those guys on the hill who were in ambush. So we had a sort of fairly ineffective. Uh, exchange of fire here. Um, I was in cover, he was in cover. Um, he kept going into the ambush to get the plus one, but um, I managed to avoid taking too many casualties, um, which was kind of a bit of luck. Um, but the worrying thing was he started with his uh, mortar to aim in on my um, Fashimjäger. Um, you can see my um, engineers have moved, uh, sorry, my veteran squad has moved forward to support as well. And I'm kind of in this grey area now, thinking, what do I do now? I uh, need to push forward, need to push forward somehow. 
um, but at least his, his howitzer could only fire forward. Now you can see here from the middle a bit better view. Uh, his half, his um, uh, his tank had moved forward. This had two medium machine guns, or two like I forget, two machine guns on it anyway. Um, he'd moved the other squad forward to to protect its flank. So I had to respond by moving the Mard around. You can see the Mard has got some pin markers on it, I think, um, which is basically from the anti-tank rifle. He hit it but couldn't pen, didn't pen it, which was very lucky for me. Um, and so I moved my tank round and plonked a shot straight through the side of that tank and took it out. So that was a piece of luck for me um, and kind of made me feel a lot happier about what was going on. However, it did provide a nice bit of wreckage cover, cover for his uh, machine gun to then move forward and, and sort of cut that gap down um, to my um, to the flank there. Now, what's not apparent on here, because I think they've already died, was he was very, very aggressive with the other uh, squad that was on the other flank he thought that he could um, push through so they ran up to the railway line and then kept running and came straight at the Falschenjäger who were in that bunker in the middle um, and needless to, say, needless to say the Falschenjäger even without their um, LMGs because they've been sniped away just played merry hell with them so I knocked them down to about I think I don't know I, I took a couple of men off them in two successive shots uh, they also had the pintle mounted machine gun from the Marder firing at them and of course the flak gun that's down here on the corner you can see he'd moved forward into position and um, just absolutely ripped a new one for those poor squads. They got down to two men and then died. Uh, you can also see his uh, sniper is finally gone. I managed to take them out in uh, the next round with this Falschenberg squad. It all fired at extreme range. Bear in mind they had become regular by then. Um, but still needed sevens to hit and actually managed to take him out and kill him. However, he, not before he'd taken out my spotter, so you can see my mortar is going to have to move forward, you'll see in a subsequent thing. Um, so yeah, it was all fairly even at the moment, but at least I'd taken down a squad, I'd taken out a sniper, um, and um, so I was two dice up effectively to zero, which is, remember this this mission was to kill that was the aim of the game, was to, to, to kill the most dice. And then you moved on to deciders, which were the objectives, which I was holding two of, I think, at this point. Um, so, yeah, and I, I like that. They played it so that, um, you know, you had to win had to win the game. So whatever the mission was, that was the, that was the primary thing. But to, to sort of allow for draws, which inevitably there will be, because, you know, two people win matches, how do you separate them? Um, they had the objective as a secondary one, and then a tertiary one was um, point kills, so how many kills were actually inflicted on your opponent in terms of points, which was an interesting result in this game. So you can see here we've moved on a bit. Um, he, so I managed to, um, I tried to, tried to have a go at his guys on the hill, had a very ineffective shot with my assault engineers, was not in flamethrower range, and um, the return fire just absolutely, well, and he killed me, and then um, uh, they failed the morale check, and, and they were gone, which was just very, very frustrating. Um, you can see his, his lieutenant moved forward and is trying to peek around the corner. He also landed a mortar shell on the Falschenjäger, uh, who didn't like it up and, at all. Um, and they actually threw a one on their green test, which means they got extra pins and went down um, and stayed inexperienced. So things were not looking so hot for me all of a sudden. So I, instead of being 2-0 up, I was suddenly 2-1 up in terms of units. Um, which wasn't so great. So you can see my veterans had stalled a bit. They couldn't really go anywhere at this point. And I kind of thought, well, at least I'm holding two objectives at this point. Um, and at least that's, you know, gives me, um, a chance of winning the game, I guess, in terms of I've got more dice in the bag in terms of killing. Um, and, um, I've also got two of the three objectives held. So that was kind of looking good. At, well, so it wasn't looking as good as it did earlier on in the game, but it turned back my way again, and mainly because of the outflank. You can see here, top left-hand corner, I bought my um, motorcycle combo team veteran on on turn four, 
um, and it whizzed round and uh, I brought it on that flank because I was pretty certain that he would put his artillery out on that flank because it was the obvious place for it to be fair or maybe the mortar um, him wasting effectively his infantry squad meant it just basically had a free run of things came pouring around the corner and shot up his anti-tank rifles that gave me another dice killed them outright um, and because his transport was now closer to me than it was to one of his by the rules it died as well so effectively my outflank, outflank took out two of his uh, troopers however um, you can see the house is still in operation and I was going to cut that down but I think we ran out of time before I had a chance but the howitzer has lost a couple of crews because the Marder managed to plonk a shell on it uh, didn't might quite take it out entirely but did a lot of damage but overall I outflanked every game with the with the uh, motorcycle combo team and in at least two of those games I think it was responsible for certainly it well yeah two of the games it probably was responsible for a lot more damage and helped me to achieve the win but definitely in this one I mean that that unit alone got me two kills uh, the transport and also the, um, uh, the anti-tank rifle which was which was great so I'm quite happy with the its performance and the way I swapped it out from a medium machine gun before the game um, you can see here in the middle my poor old Marder forgot to take smoke me but he was dead he was taken out uh, by his howitzer of all things he, he plonked another shot with the anti-tank rifle um, didn't pen uh, but the uh, howitzer because it didn't have a spotter anymore opened up and, and hit the marder and there wasn't a lot left after that because that's a big ass shell hand landing down you can see I'm holding the uh, objective uh, we played it that you had to be touching the objective to hold it so yeah I'm holding that objective you can see the mortar has moved forward into a position where it can see things directly which was useful and the flat gun has moved forward after its victorious uh, shooting up of those uh, poor unfortunate infantry so always looking pretty good at this stage I'd suddenly gone up to uh, so that was uh, also, if I remember rightly, at this point, I think I killed his officer with with my sniper. Um, so I was five to two up. Um, so I'd killed his anti-tank rifle, I'd killed his officer, and I'd killed um, uh, squad, two squad, yeah, one squad. Um, so yeah, in the end, it went down to five two. So I won the game uh, in terms of that. I held two of the objectives, so that was a, a, a nice result as well. However, he actually killed. 12 more points of my army than of his but still it was a win and it was really enjoyable for my first other uh, first other. so t game two was uh, using the point defense scenario so um, I was up against uh, Eric who was using a, um, a Russian army but it was a very elite veteran Russian army um, we were playing uh, he was basically he chose to be attacker which I think actually in hindsight he would have chosen the other way around and I was defender I had three objectives to hold and I basically had to hold them to at least two of them to win the game given the fact he was a foot slogging army to get across the board was quite tough for him especially when he got pinned down by my fairly accurate fire I have to say uh, movement was caused by him using his, heart, his uh, armoured cast come whizzing down this road on the first turn did a sort of wheel spin down here and put right consternation amongst my troops you can see the flat gun turned around and fired I didn't manage to penetrate it unfortunately well, I think uh, yeah it did but it only stunned it also in front of it is the mortar which um, uh, meant I had to do something with it so instead of using my assault engineers elsewhere I debussed them straight away and tried to use a flamethrower up the, up the rear of the uh, of the armor car I managed to hit it but only do one damaging hit and uh, uh, not enough to kill it unfortunately just couldn't quite kill it so it instead uh, gave it uh, a good few pins at that point um, and now my assault engineers only had anti-tank grenades so I couldn't charge in and uh, or I couldn't use um, flame I couldn't use um, Faust on it which was really really frustrating however uh, it was in real trouble and he recognized that and his turn next turn he actually whizzed it over to the left where um, it got within range of my Faustrymeagers that were in a wood that did happen to have two uh, Panzerfausts and two Panzerfausts duly flew out of the wood and um, destroyed the uh, BA-10 I think it was so uh, yeah not a great start for him um, but you know it was a little bit rash but it was kind of amusing and um, you know probably in hindsight again he, if he'd been 
uh, having the game again, I think he would have defended and he would have um, uh, used that truck, a, uh, that armor car, a little bit more wisely. Because although it did, I guess, effectively play, take my um, truck and um, assault engineers out of the game because I had to deal with that threat in my sort of rear area. Um, but it did cost him a dice. So here's another view of the battlefield. Um, didn't get so many pictures in the last couple of games. I was so busy just actually playing. Um, so you can see here, Eric. Um, well, actually, off off the off to the left, you can't quite see it, and I didn't get a picture. Unfortunately, is a graveyard which had a couple of dominating towers around it, big walls around it. Um, and I put one of the objectives in that, and defending it, well, sort of just sort of keeping it normally occupied, was the my sniper in a tower. And also just behind it was my spotter for my mortar. Um, and actually those two units managed to tie down that veteran unit over in the middle there. He had absolutely no luck moving it, moved it forward, took a couple of shots and they just hit the ground and didn't want to budge. And then the sniper took out their officer and it was just horrible for him. <clears throat> Bear in mind his mission was to take at least two of the three objectives. He had to get shifting and it was really tough to do. Um, in front of the church, you can see there's a, a well, you can see his officer who I shot eventually with my um, um, sniper. Um, <clears throat> there's also um, a green, his free green squad is there, uh, which was his only inexperienced squad. Everything else was veteran. The inevitable uh, is it the Ziff artillery, the uh, one that's equally good in HE or anti-tank mode, sitting in the centre there, just about to shell the building in front of us here, which is. Um, contains well it's split level so on the top level was one of my fashion yoga squads and below it was the veterinary squad uh, you can just about see um, some uh, barricades there where my officer was and just to the left of him just off the picture is a small wood where the other fashion yoga squad was um, <coughs> positioned um, which also had an objective in it so um, then you've already seen the other objective which was out on the right hand wing um, he's moving forward with, there's a squad that came down the road, you can see just where his right hand is, uh, right finger is pointing, and that squad took a bit of a pasting from the guys in the building. <clears throat> you can see again, he's pushing forward game uh, manfully, really. Uh, the little blue thing um, is uh, what's left of his um, flamethrower team, he moves them round. I took out the supporting man. They have a rule, um, this this particular Russian thing, where you couldn't pick out, I think it was this one, you couldn't pick out specific targets. Um, <clears throat> so even though I think I got a six and a six, um, I couldn't take the flamer out. I could only take his attendant out. So I actually focused all my fire from the two squads in this building on the green squad and tried to wipe them out um, and use the truck and... Um, the uh, yeah basically the truck to provide fire onto the flamer flamer still got through and managed to flame into the building but actually missed so he managed to miss the building from that point which is just uh, soul destroying for him and that squad was absolutely annihilated as does the one you can see is trying to creep its way down the hedge and was eventually just cut down um, to a man so <clears throat> as I said I think he had a really tough deal of this one I think um, it was very, very tough for the attacker to get across the table, uh, especially since time was very limited. Um, we had, um, I don't think we got past turn four on this this map, but I think, you know, he, he was a good grace and he did recognise that he really didn't have any chance at all. Once his uh, big squads got tied down by all the machine gun fire, you can see the, the little wood which had one of the objectives in my Falschirm Jäger hit sitting here. They're the ones that took out the armoured car. <laughs> Linking them is the vet, is the first lieutenant with his attendant, and then the building just up above them is is where my twin squads were. Um, now, interesting, you can see um, you can see that squad of his which was tied down, and also beside that it was a medium machine gun with, um, which basically uh, I managed to stop in its tracks with the Falschenberger. They opened up at range, mainly only firing their um, light machine guns, but I did have two of them in there and, and basically killed all by one of the men in there, they went down and really had no part to play in the game for the rest of the game. Um, and really that was the story of this of this game. He just couldn't get forward. Every time he tried to do something, um, he came forward in dribs and drabs and I was able to just to, to annihilate them with the, the heavy gunfire that this army of mine has. 
Um, and ultimately, you know, it just petered out into a, a fairly easy win for me. I think the only reason why I didn't hold all three objectives is was I'd, I'd moved one of my units too far ahead to to get back to to get close to it. So um, it ended up being a two. Uh, I won won the game. I also killed. Oh, you don't see it. The, the um, sidecar comes on the right flank, shoots up another. Um, tank killer unit and that was a good win for me um giving me two overall so from then it was on to the verified atmosphere of game three and the top table uh, well actually this was the second table we were due to play uh, on the previous same table as we fought last time um and the guy who'd fought on this table the previous time was supposed to fight again on this table so we agreed to swap over which i'm not sure in hindsight was the best thing really um we were playing uh key positions so four objectives we each placed two they had to be um at least 12 inches apart from each other and you can see uh, there's one up there in the top right hand corner there's one down here in the middle area there was another one um, to the left and then one round at the back. You can see um, I was playing um, Chris Ashton, had a fantastically painted um, German Africa Corps army, um, load of veteran squads, um, 88, you can see the 88 just on the table there. Um, he had a Panzer III um, and what else do you have? A mortar, which you can just see the mortar poking out between the behind the right hand building because it was uh, everything came on. Um, we couldn't put our spotters on um, initially anyway, so he just marched his on and was firing um, direct actually at my flat gun, which was down here to the left hand side of the, the map. And they had an exchange of fire for a little while, completely ineffective until my uh, AA gun gave up. You can see I tried to push down the right hand side and see my truck there, uh, which had the um, veteran, uh, the assault engineers in, had um, a Falschenjäger squad in this building down to the right, uh, which I tried to push up. He pushed his tank down that flank as well, which kind of put the kibosh on everything I was trying to do. I also had my veteran unit down there as well. Um, and I made a couple of serious misplays, got hosed by the tank and then by a squad that's hiding in that building to the uh, to the left of the um, the dice that's up there. Um, in the other side, you can see the other objective there, uh, in fact the two other objectives, and um, you can see my flat gun that was exchanging fire with the um, mortar in the middle. He pushed a squad right through the centre, through that middle area, um, and he also pushed one through that big house uh, to the right, uh, to his right, my left as we're looking at it, um, to get to that objective. Now I managed to kill, just completely eradicated the squad that came through the middle. I have another Falschenjäger squad in that building where the Marder and the flag gun are flanking. Um, and um, the combination of that, a sniper who's in the building to the right, um, just absolutely annihilated that squad of his. He moved another squad up to take that objective and just on the last turn, turn five, I rushed my Falschenjäger out to contest that objective out on the left flank. Um, the Marden swapped places with the flak and actually took out his mortar, which was rather nice. And my outflank tag, again, the, um, the sidecar came in on the left hand side trundle along he tried to block it with my with his um, toe for his 88 so i just destroyed that um but didn't do much in this game with the uh, with the eight with the um sidecar um my other flank attack i lost pretty much the entire uh, inexperienced squash by squad by um deciding not to go down against um the 88 sorry against the um uh, Panzer III, which was a big mistake, and I should have done that. Um, but hey, hindsight, I was a bit tired by then, to be fair. Um, but they survived enough for there to be two left. Uh, they did also turn regular from their green test, which was rather nice. Um, they dived into that bu big building you saw at the top, um, and um, they were supported by the uh, assault engineers who got down to one man, that was it, um, and then the veterans. Uh, came down to the very, very last turn. Um, he tried to move one of his squads out of the building at the very top of the map um, and took that objective, which was the one that he needed to win the game. So he was then holding one, I was holding one, and the other ones were uh, contested. Um, but with my very last 
couple of dice and I got lucky that my dice came up last. Um, I sorted him with everything I had basically um, and finally won the last combat with my sorts engineers um, one, uh, two to one and wiped him out and took the final objective and took the win. So I actually finished up with three wins out of three games. It was a cracking game, really, really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, tremendous fun was had by both of us, actually. I think we both agreed it was a great game and we're going to have to have a rematch. Looking at you, Chris, any time you want it, big boy. So there you go, the upshot of um, all those games was a win. <laughs> Which actually gobsmacked me because it was uh, the very first time I've... Um, done a bolt action tournament and I uh, used to do a lot of uh, ancient wargaming many many moons ago 6th and 7th edition WRG if anybody remembers that far back uh, but I haven't um, done any competitive gaming for a long time and this wasn't really competitive this was just um, fun really and I really really enjoyed the day three games which was just about enough for me um, and I got three wins out of it so um, it was a little snafu with the organising of it. I didn't actually initially get placed first because they confused mine and Chris's uh, result. I switched it around, so um, initially I thought Chris had won, but then we sorted that out. Chris was very decent and gracious, um, and actually it turned out that I won. Um, so there you go. What fun it was. So I have to say, brilliant fun. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks to all the guys at uh, Reading, um, and also the Maidenhead team, because it seemed like I fought three at three of my games were against Maidenhead folks so I really enjoyed it um, next time hopefully we can get a farmer team together to go and compete it was just me and Sylvia at this one um, and hopefully we can compete properly but thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it so thanks very much to everybody who was there hope you enjoyed this quick look at it and I will see you again soon